As an approach to estimating volatility, the advantage of the exponentially weighted moving average is that it overcomes the key weakness of the historical standard deviation. And that weakness is that the historical standard deviation assigns the same weight to all of the returns in the historical window. My previous video illustrated the most common and basic approach to estimating volatility, and that was with the historical standard deviation approach. We might abbreviate it in this way. And if we want to take one step up the ladder in sophistication, then we can use the exponentially weighted moving average that we might see written this way, EWMA. It shares much in common with the historical standard deviation. As before, we need a sequence or series of asset prices. After all, volatility is just a statistic based on a series of prices. In this case, I'm going back 60 days. So maybe that's three months times or multiplied by 20 trading days per month. And as before, we have price relatives. So this is just the ratio of a price divided by the previous day's price. So here when we have a daily period, the price relatives or also called wealth ratios should be pretty close to one. Then what we did previously and we'll do here again is take the natural log of these relative prices. And so these are daily log returns and the natural log means that we are assuming continuously compounded returns. That's what the natural log means and it ends up being elegant. We could use the simple arithmetic returns if we want. Then we did the key thing that we do in a volatility measure which is we square the returns. So we have a sequence of daily squared returns therefore these will all be positive and the average of them is an estimate of the daily variance. That's how easy this was. And it's also easy to say it this way when we use the historical standard deviation, right? It's the, in this approach, the daily variance is equal to the average of the series of squared returns. However, the weakness of this and the common criticism of this historical standard deviation approach to estimating volatility is that implicitly all of the daily returns in the series are getting the same weight. So we could say this is an equally weighted approach or we could say it's an unweighted approach. But what it means is that if the reason it's a criticism is that let's say there was a spike in volatility most recently well, the historical standard deviation wouldn't really capture that because we could rearrange the sequence here and we get the same result. The most recent returns are getting the same weight as the more distant returns. That's a weakness. So it's overcome in the exponentially weighted moving average by assigning greater weights to more recent returns and lesser weights to more distant returns or returns that are more distant in the past. It does this elegantly with a single parameter almost always denoted with lambda. So I'm using lambda of 80% or 0.8. Oftentimes we're asked what's a good how, what's a good way to calibrate it or what's a good what's a common level and we know that lambdas usually are at least 80%. Oftentimes 85% or greater, um, sometimes 94% for example. So we usually see pretty high lambda. It's also called a smoothing parameter or a persistence parameter. So I'm using 80%, which is on the lower end of the typical ranges, only because I get clean numbers here. And what it means is that if I have a lambda of 80%, then the weight assigned to the squared return on yesterday, day n minus 1, we're at n minus 0 or n, day n minus 1 gets a weight of 1 minus lambda or in my case 20%. Then if we go back one more day in time, back to day n minus 2, its weight is 16% and that's because the 16% is 80% of the 20%. And then if we go back to day n minus 3, its weight 
of 12.8% is exactly 80% of the 16%. If we go back to day n minus 4, its weight is 10.2%, which is exactly 80% of the 12.8%. So the lambda, a way to interpret the lambda, in this case of 80%, is it's the constant ratio of consecutive weights, and these weights are declining exponentially, such that if our window's long enough, then the weights in our more distant past are getting very close to zero and effectively zero, such that when I sum my series of 60 days, it's displaying as 100% because it's rounding up to 100%. It's technically an infinite series, so my actual sum is a little bit less than 100%. Okay, but now that I have weights, here's the key variation, the key difference between the exponentially weighted moving average and the historical standard deviation that was implicitly equally weighted or unweighted. And that is we just multiply the squared return by the weight, and then we have a series there of not equally weighted ret squared returns, but rather weighted ex in exponential decline. And the sum of that series here is the weighted average, as opposed to under the historical standard deviation, we had an equally weighted or unweighted average. Here we have the exponentially weighted average, and that's the daily variance estimate, but under the EWMA approach, and you can see that it's different. But it is a valid estimate of the daily variance, such that if we take the square root, we get an estimate of the current volatility under this approach, and you can see that it is higher. So that captures the key difference, the fact that we now give more recent returns greater weight and more, and more distant returns lower weight to affect a different result or estimate in our daily volatility, but it would be tedious to do all of these weights. So the another virtue or reason for designing it this way is that because this is an infinite series, I won't show the math, this infinite series elegantly reduces to a recursive formula, which is the way that we most often see the exponentially weighted moving average. And so that is to say we see an estimate of today's variance, right? Sigma sub n, n meaning today, or n minus zero, the variance estimate under exponentially weighted moving average is going to be our lambda parameter multiplied by the variance estimate yesterday. So that's sigma sub n minus one squared. So that's why I say this is recursive, our variance estimate is a function of yesterday's variance weighted by lambda. So we have one term that's weighted by lambda, and then we have another term. The remainder is one minus lambda, right? If we add these two weights together, we get 100% weight, and it's going to be, that weight is going to be applied to the most recent return squared, sometimes called the innovation. So that's the most recent information. It gets a weight of one minus lambda. This recursive version of the exponentially weighted moving average is an elegant summary of the same result we would get if we went through this tedious infinite series. So that's pretty cool. And that's what I've shown right down here. And I'll show you in the Excel version off the page. You can download the spreadsheet separately. I did calculate the volatility for the previous day. So that's the n minus one sigma, but I use the same, I use the same approach that I used here with exponentially declines. And then here I have the variance according to exponentially weighted moving average. And I'll just rekey it now. So we said that it's the lambda multiplied by the lagged variance. So I need to square that added to one minus the lambda multiplied by the most recent squared return. And you can see I get the daily variance estimate, which is the same as the uh, sort of brute force method over here. Take the square root of that and I get the 
daily volatility estimate. But this, in this version, I've done it here with the elegant recursive version of the exponentially weighted moving average. And so just finally, just to illustrate why that matters, here I have a series. I randomized it with some realistic, uh, some some reasonable assumptions. But let's just say I came in, and most recently there was really a spike. Let's say 22. I'll try to show that up, and that creates. You can see here a significant difference in the uh, recent daily returns, and such that the historical standard deviation isn't impacted too much. But you can see it really shows up in the exponentially weighted moving average. So that's the kind of phenomenon that this measure of volatility is intended to capture. Thank you. If this video is helpful, consider subscribing to our channel and getting our updates. Thank you.